All right, traders. It's Thursday night, uh, July 28, 2011, and it's 10:40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In this is after market, obviously. Going across on no volume to speak of, you can see here. And then as I was watching the markets here, um, huge volumes are flowing in for after market hours and we're dropping. Now we have this bearish pennant. You can see this little pennant here. It's a really nice looking guy. You draw a couple lines here and then another one coming higher. Um, and this is developed at the bottom of this leg. As it dropped, I was um, short six contracts. And as it was dropping, I shorted another four. I have 10 short contracts now. It looks like it's, well, let me see here. Um, short $644,000 in the markets at this moment. And so I have a lot of uh, profit at this time. However, these triangles, they can pop or drop what I'm looking for here is for this to drop down since I am short however these go either direction so I do have a stop loss and let me show you where that stop loss is it's technically I get this right at the perfect spot seven five let's make that red meaning I will stop out of half of my position if we get to this line right here and it looks like it's wanting to break out of this to the upside. This is a two minute chart that I'm looking at right now. And if this thing pops up here and gets to that line, I will unload half of my position. And then I will set another stop, probably, I don't know, probably this 1292.50 area, maybe above, or maybe go to a five minute chart and find the next area of resistance and set it just above that. So um, in this triangle, you can see volume is dissipating. Very typical to see that. And if it does start to pop higher, I would like to not see volume get any higher. So it would be a failed attempt to the upside and then head down. And that's what I'm hoping to see at, at this moment. I like that it popped up. Now it's coming back down. And we are in the apex of this triangle right now. So the bulls had their shot. Actually, I could take this and move it just to the highs of those shadows now. And consider this, the line. I go down to these shadows, that shadow, and coming across. And say, yeah, that would be, uh, I would call this the, the new triangle that we're in at this moment. So we get a new tick. As far as my lines are concerned, it shows that we are in the apex here. And it's and in the apex, if it gets past the apex, it loses all of its power or strength. And this is a loose apex. To be quite frank, there's a little pop there. I could stop out of half of my position if we go higher. Blow this up so we can really see it. But no volume has come in. You can see this. And that's, look at that. People selling into that strength is what it looked like. There it is. People, every time it pops up, people selling into that strength. Let's see if it can keep doing that. If it does it for very long, it will come back down. However, if it stays here, oh, nope, keep active. Over, all right. Just so you're not have to sitting, so you're not sitting through too much of this, I'll pause it from time to time. Just uh, to quicken up this action. All right. It has crossed that line, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to toy with these lines a bit more. Now we see we hit here, 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 and perhaps this will act as some sort of resistance. Kind of have a rising wedge pennant, but we're getting very close to me stopping out if it goes higher up here. Okay, got a tick right here. It looks like that we could be breaking down from this and being short. I would like to personally see that take place. 
And in order to bring this to a five minute chart, the five minute chart, we're dropping, we're popping up. This is the bear pullback. So, as long as this bear pullback doesn't go any higher than this line, I'm a happy camper. If this dude could start breaking down right now, I'd be really happy with that. On a breakdown here, I'd like to see an increase of volume follow that sort of breakdown. I'd like to see another leg like this develop itself right here. Kind of floating around sideways here. I need this thing to make a move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, to bring in another line. I'd say anything above that line would make me uncomfortable. It has the best chance of dropping right now, but I don't see volume coming in to really take advantage of this weakness. It is dropping, but again, there's no volume. If I'd like for this to drop any bulls right here in this group, fill in that pain. And they're going to want to sell into that. And then you'll have the bears coming in, exploiting that opportunity to the downside. So you should see an influx of volume come in, even this late of an evening. So really no sell-off here. So we could be starting to put in a bottom or a trading range of sorts. But again, long as it stays below this line I'm happy I got a lot of profit right now playing with the house's money I'll sleep like a baby matter of fact I may instead of doing a half a position here do a full position and just exit the trade well exit all of my uh, positions other than I'd have to calculate. I might keep three of them on the table to protect, I don't know, $150 worth of uh, long exposure that I have out in the market. If I have more than that, I'll probably have to hold on to four contracts just to be hedged going into the GDP report tomorrow. Because that's going to be a, a, big, a big report. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that red line get rid of this line sometimes what you'll have to do when you're doing tactical analysis get rid of a couple lines and rethink your pattern that you have and and then draw some other lines so right now what I'm seeing here is a trading range between 1285 and some change and 1289 and some change we're just caught but in this area we're on the upper side of that area what I could do is take my stop loss and actually bring that down and probably get away with stop loss around 89.24, uh, 12.89.25 area. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. 25. So I'm going to set a Full order exit. Well, let me see how many I have here. Calculating that 100, 200. Okay. So I need to keep three contracts. So I will sell seven if it gets to 1289.25. I'm doing this. I use interactive brokers to make those trades. like this drop um, that's looking nice matter of fact I should probably be looking at another trend line right here coming across those guys Wow Yeah, if this thing pops up anytime soon, this would be a double bottom. I won't want any part of this. Matter of fact, I am going to probably move my stop loss right there. I can't set it here because that's a 
that's what's called a dynamic candlestick so I can only move stop losses on static candlesticks and for those individuals who are uh, students of mine you know all about those tips and tricks on how we do that and man, it seems a little high to me a nice little drop like that 87.75 that's what I'm going to do 87 seven seventy five and I will actually go to bed with that so because it looks like it's down several bars it looks like it's going to want to reverse and if it does you will have a double bottom trend reversal pattern I would expect it to pop doesn't mean it will go up but it could get caught in this trading range between this line and this line for some time but and I'm happy with the profits um, that I have made thus far so I'm uh, not too shabby all right that's it for the time being I may come and check it here in a little while and if I haven't stopped out I will re um, open this recording I just checked this again and it stays on this trend line heading down I like that it broke this low here I like that we see volume starting to pick up a bit and um, putting a big smile on my face so what I'm gonna do here is take my stop loss I keep inching it down and I will set that to um, around 1286.50 So I think any sort of pop that we might get will be a big pop because uh, you'll have all those people such as myself who are short here at a big support area uh, covering those shorts. So volume should increase on a pop, but I'm not sure if the bulls will jump in to let that keep going up because something has this market spooked right now. If you look here, the S&P is down 0.9%, Dow down 0.8%, 0.8% here on the on the NASDAQ. So uh, markets are you know, in a lot of trouble at this moment. So something has happened overseas. And now we have a static candlestick, and it looks like we're getting ready to get a bounce. And I could probably go to, um, I want to get rid of this line. I'm going to do 8550. I know that's going to basically put me out, but I just, I'm really happy with these gains and I, I, I'm okay with stopping out, taking those gains. I will leave enough on the table. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave three contracts on the table to stay hedged because I picked up a number of longs this morning. And because uh, we got that nice, we got the gap down and then we ran straight up and I picked up a number of longs. And, and then by days in, I was underwater on those, so I was glad that I had my hedge in position. So here we're seeing a bottoming formation. We have a doji. We're starting another doji. And that's happening at an area of natural support. It puts us right at 1285 um, area. And wouldn't surprise me to get a pop here. But so far, the bodies have remained below this trend line that we have drawn coming down. But you're, you're down, um, I call that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars working on number eight, but that's an inside trading day or um, candlestick. But it is dynamic, it's not yet static, so I can't count it. But that's pretty extended, and these are very tiny candlesticks. The fear isn't there like what we see right here, and we see volume picking up, you know, on that doji. So that is a signal that there could be some capitulation and some movement, you know, wanting to change to the upside. So here we have a tick on the other side of the trend line. And this is where the bulls might think, yep, this is a low. The one thing that could happen here that would be really nice is if we pinch yet again, giving us another triangle or what's called a bullish pennant. And it would be something like that. 
Now I'm using some liberties to draw a triangle on such little data here, but that would be ideal if we stayed within some sort of pinching pattern and that set us down yet again. But so far I've rode this thing down. I was already sure that added to those shorts as we dropped uh, because I had those orders already set in place and I actually had a bracket order. They sold out on me and I saw that I, you know, immediately sold for a nice profit and I looked at the volume come in so I immediately re-entered and I went with a full 10 contracts and yeah, so, so for, look at this, we're showing weakness yet again. Not too shabby. So those lines, I'm just going to get rid of. Take the liberty to move this down 85. So, no. I'm going to keep it 8550. 12, 8550. I'm good with that. That's a that's a nice number because it puts me near the top here, but I'm above there. This candlestick, this candle, this candlestick. But we're starting to build a low base. As long as we can keep building a low base and not pivot head back up, happy camper. Happy camper. So this trend line now has been busted on this white candlestick so what I'm going to do is delete that line recalibrate say where am I here and I can see that we have the makings of what be, you know what could be some sort of falling wedge but this line it's an important line to me and if we could break down below that and sustain uh, you know something below this trend line that would be good anything above this area would be bad for me as a short and this thing should head higher but it's late I am not going to turn around and make this into a long trade normally that would be a logical thing but I like that this is building a low base now it is not I mean here you got a doji reversal pattern on some volume. We should have made a higher high. We did not make that higher high. We're moving in a lateral uh, motion, which gives more confidence to the bulls or bears, like you're hearing in my voice right now. Less confidence uh, to the bulls. And you'll start to see a momentum change. And if it starts to drop, the bulls, you know, can't handle that, uh, uh, that pressure. And they will sell out bears will add to their position so you should see volume increase on our breakdown however if this little base starts to pop you have all these people ready to take profits like me and there's going to be a lot of people at that level where I just set mine so expect volume to really spike up if it does that it should be a real fast spike you get a nice white candlestick you know just boom because of all the activity taking place really like this low base it's just not going higher like that a lot volume drying up very very typical to see that in a base kind of at a stalemate right now there's a little pop I'm out of my trade Took a very nice profit. Like I said, there's your pop. Volume, not nearly what I thought it might be on a pop such as this. But happy to be out of that. I have very nice gains for a very unexpected move in the markets. Glad I was in front of my computer at the time of that happening. And um, now I am hedged. I love that feeling of being hedged. However, I'm hedged. No, I, well, I am hedged, but I am still net to the bearish side by about $58,000, almost $59,000. So um, let's see what the GDP brings us. Take care. And hope this was educational. If you want to learn how to trade, we do have a mentorship program that's second to none. 
uh, I'll be your mentor. I'll teach you how this is done. And if you specifically want to learn options or, um, I'm sorry, futures or currency trading, and you want to get into commodities and want to get into the details of trading these e minis futures, I do have a mentor that is just genius on this. Just let me know. And all you have to do is send an email to mentor at grocktrade.com. We'll take care of you. Take care and very safe trading.